<laughs> just have to uh <laughs> the lighting no huh? sorry that's no that's okay hello all we are live welcome to fma discussion this is episode 81 and tonight we are featuring three guests from ki kali il susamo we have tonight uh, Guru Jeff, Guru Vico, and Guru Brandon. Hello. All. Hello, hello. Hey, I've been stopped. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for, uh, you know, for coming on. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Oh no, my gosh, ha uh, happy to do so. So, for the folks who are watching, um, each one of these guys have been on in previous episodes. So tonight is going to serve the purpose and intention of kind of status quo and what's coming down the pipeline and what they've been doing as of late and all that. So, and then they're gonna do some, besides the tell, they're gonna do some show at the end. And in addition, we have a couple of questions, which are uh, from Elric, which actually I thought were good questions and all that. So, uh, um, and also if you're watching, stay tuned at the end, I will be uh, talking about Tuesday night's guests who I think is pretty unique from the system he's done and revealing December's lineup. All right. So, welcome, guys. Thank you again for uh, coming on. How's everybody doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. 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 <laughs> <laughs> wow, we already got. Okay. Uh, John Rister. Hey, John Van Jesse. Richard Pacman checking in from San Diego. <laughs> so, I'm going to just jump right into it because I know we got three of you on here. Plus, we got the demos and we got a couple questions. And all that. So I want to just open up with uh, Google Brandon, just for the folks who maybe didn't see your episode and all that. Mm -hmm. You know what? What made you? What gave you the? You know the drive or the motivation to finally come out and make a make yourself known and bring your father's system more to the forefront for those who maybe didn't see the episode, the first one, and all that. Well, actually, um, with all that, I've always been doing it more of, of course, like on the low, still, like still training and things like that. But then after a while, it's more of ever since I got back here since, I mean, because of the whole uh, pandemic and everything, it gave me a lot more more time, you could say, to really kind of focus, being able to kind of split my time and be more, I guess you could say, useful with my time where, okay, I'll be able to kind of have better time management skills. Because back then it was always just work, work, work and let's say dancing, for example. But then after a while, it's more of, I started I started like cleaning up my dad's like things and everything that I saw all his videos. And then like always like discussing with Guru Jeff or let's say with Guru Vico. And then that's when I was like, okay, well, like, you know, there's also the group over here who's also been wanting to learn also my dad's branch. So mm -hmm. then I started off like small and everything, things like that. But then, I mean, going further with all that, it was more of, I needed to kind of just to show myself to also, for people to also understand more of my dad's branch of Illustrissimo, you know, cause there's always been like, you know, like everything going on. Oh, like, you know, like in terms of movement, like Master Ricketts moves like this, Master Ricketts moves like that, things like, you know, there's always been that. Or let's say it's just from like whispers. Oh, like from the old videos I've seen, or it's always just been like word of mouth kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So at least like now with all this movement, what I'm trying to do is really just to, show them that like my in terms of my dad's branch like it's still active we're still moving we're not just like on the low we're not we're not just quiet or anything it's just more of really just to show them that it's still here the system is here it's still here it's it's, it's not dead that's really what it is so that's yeah. really what kind of gave me the drive to just for people to to start knowing like what it's all about you know at least yeah. like for my dad's branch and everything I think it's been fantastic you've done that. I mean, I, you know, to be honest, I mean, I, I've always seen some of Guru Jeff's stuff and all that, but I think now you came out to the forefront. I mean, I think people are getting such a better lens of what you do, representing your father in conjunction, you know, with the two to the right of us, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and all that. So, Guru Jeff, what do you, anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, I think it's uh, a great uh, event to, to have uh, Guru Brandon out and actually because uh, <laughs> uh, we all have Guru Biko and I uh, we know what we know about uh, Guru Brandon but we need to share it to the world you know what I'm saying we need to share the wealth 
Because that's why, you know, personally, uh, like I said, I, I've always treated the, uh, the stuff that I've learned from uh, Master Topher and uh, Guru Brandon. And, and now with, with Guru Vico, I mean, just uh, a unique uh, uh, addition to the KI community. It's a unique uh, addition, actually. You know what I'm saying? And, and it needs to be uh, underlined more, if you will. Put more in the spotlight. So, I, I, personally speaking, I, I'm gratified and I'm thankful that uh, he's out. He's out there and and doing the things that he does. You know, yes, I'm, I'm very proud. Of you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> we're we're we're, 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 we're his biggest fans and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, whenever we see him move, it, it it's like a, an ideal. It's like, yeah, I, one day I, maybe I'll be half as good as he is. Yeah. You know what I'm I know some of those some of those older folks might not be liking that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, Guru Vico, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, um, I agree with everything that uh, the Guru Jeff said, and I also wanted to say that you know exactly what you know. We were you know I've been training and teaching very low key, um, and you know it was just the timings right where. Right now, um, you know, there's someone said it, you know, what are the two worst things that can happen right now? Pandemic and social media, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and so with that, the, the, you know, there's, you know, social, you can't really control the truths that come out or the untruths that come out. So the timing's right where, um, that we have this, this mode of communication and the internet that, you know, there needs to be some regulation of the truth and, it's a good time that that that, that Guru Brandon is coming out because it just adds to standing up for what's really true, right? Mm. And, uh, and so it's perfect timing. We're here to support him, and 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 when you have when you see, we'll talk about it later about the unity. Uh, as soon as you see that, you actually see more of the art. It, it him coming up, Matthew Cooper's legacy comes out actually complements what's already out there even more. But you want yeah. everything to with each other, but it's just perfect timing. No, fantastic. And again, I, you know, um, I think it's fantastic, um, you know, that this is happening. You know, people get to see this sanction, you know, uh, I think it's been a breath of fresh air in the community for more reasons than one, being on the behind the scenes, so to speak, and hearing stuff. And I can tell you, it's been nothing but positive accolades from all of you guys. So I think it's Great, great thing. So let's just you know again for the folks who maybe didn't see your guys' episodes. I think if I recall correctly, I had Guru Jeff on first, then Guru Vico, then Guru Jeff and Guru Vico, and then Guru Brandon. But let's just obviously uh, Guru Brandon's language speaks for you know you go back. So what's uh like uh I mean to nineties? Am I correct? Just far as people understand your lineage, far as time tenure, I guess. Yeah, 1992 to 93, um, joined Bhaktan International. That was right at that time. There were, I think, three places where, three at that time when I joined, three places where training was going on. One was the uh, Makati YMCA, and then one was in Master Tuper's house, and then the other house in San Miguel Village in uh, in Makati as well, near Bel Air. So, and then... Um, so that was the time. It was a lot of empty hands. It was a lot of, a lot of sagasa, a lot of uh, sparring. Um, but you would witness all the masters being in one room under, on, you know, mm -hmm. being in one. Incredible. Yeah, that's just the magic. Uh, Master Alex Cole, you know, Master Punungore Edgar Salute. Everyone, you know, was under, was under was under that group. Master Tony Diego, right? And then they would Luneta the, the few times when there would be uh, exhibitions. I'd see Tatang, right? I was just a kid, right? Just watching, mm -hmm. and fighting. You know, I wanted the street fighting. So, eventually, you know, the the, the weapons came came after. So. Yeah, I think you, I think I remember you saying that. Um, yeah, you were gung ho on the empty hand, and then um, and then you you know slowly transitioned to the weapons. You know, uh, when I, if I recall correctly, when GM Tony was coming in, if I'm accurate. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes Master Tuper would, would have vi visitors from Australia or from overseas. They would come to either one of the three gyms I mentioned before. So he would teach, right? And then, so I'd see that one mode. And then the second one is when Master Tony would come and the whole lesson was on 
on KI, mm. right? Yeah. And then uh, the one, yeah, so those are the two times that um, those two different occasions, whether, you know, back and forth or one more than the other, that could always be either those two options. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Guru Jeff, uh, I know you came later and you had that, the famous um, bookstore meeting there, uh, <laughs> uh, which was uh, pretty incredible that that occurred just being in a, uh, Barnes and Nobles, if I'm correct, right? Um, That's correct. So uh, for those who maybe haven't heard this, let's, uh, let's hear it. Well, I've always been interested in FMA and stuff like that, and uh, I've, I've always read up on it. And I just happened to have a copy of uh, the infamous uh, illustration of a book, and I, I devoured that, man. It's like uh, during that time, I only had a C-Lot training, but I've always been uh, interested in Kali, and I was thinking, I'll never meet this guy. You know, he's always traveling. He's always like in the PI and stuff like that. So I put it aside as a bucket list and whatnot. And uh, circumstances happened that I was able to uh, uh, migrate to San Diego and got a job there. And, you know, just minding my own business, trying to, you know, go to my haunts. And, uh, uh, you know, my usual haunts usually is the, the magazine rack. If you can remember that, right? The magazine rack oh, where yeah, they have, yeah. uh, well, it's kind of funny to say that now, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's coming back. But anyway, <laughs> before the pandemic, they had the magazine racks there that I always go to the martial arts section, right? And, and you know, my usual haunt. And I was going through my thing, and all of a sudden I saw this guy, and he looked so familiar. I was like, wait a minute, that that's Topa Ricketts. So I I had to do another circle around the magazine rack just to make sure, and then I I, I, had, to, uh, <laughs> I had to like uh, work up my my bravery, yeah, you know, to even approach him. So mm -hmm. I did, and he said, hey, uh, "Excuse me, are, are you are you Topo Ricketts?" And he said he looked up to me and said, "Yes, I am." And I and he said, uh, uh, "How do you know me?" And he said, "Yeah, aren't you in the book?" Yeah, yeah, oh. oh. <laughs> Then that started my whole journey. It was like uh, 2004 that when wow. I first uh, met him, and then uh, later on that year, that's when I started until uh, you know his unfortunate passing. But yeah, that was like totally unexpected. I never, in my wildest dreams, ever thought that I would ever meet him. But sure enough, mm. not only I met him, wonderful family and. Uh, and uh, you know, ten plus years later, we're still associated with the Ricketts clan. So yeah, that's very fantastic. proud of it. Yeah, yeah, very proud of that. And so, Guru Brandon, I mean, obviously, if I recall correctly, you started like four years old or something. You were hitting <laughs> something. I <remember>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, just for the folks who maybe didn't see it, was it it was was it necessarily formal in your early years? Oh, it was more of because um, when I started, I think it was around like three or four years old. It was more of the playtime, like for kids to play. It was actually more like it was like my dad was tricking me. He was like, "Okay, if you want to like you know like like play or whatever, you gotta like kick this." So we would always like videos of me like kicking something just to kind of get that that habit going and then after or that interest you could say and then after a while it wasn't until when i actually got older and bigger where i'm actually big enough to hold the stick because you know being like a like a small filipino baby you know the, the, the stick is definitely taller than me so i couldn't exactly <laughs> carry with one hand and so it wasn't until like around so you're you're doing dos manos at three years old <laughs> basically or i couldn't even pick it up it was just hanging down you know <laughs> but um it wasn't until I think around 10, 11 or something was when I started getting more into it. And then like moving to the States, that's when I actually started getting more serious with it after more of like, after I saw my brother, my older brother kind of 
kind of let's say um there there were some guys before that kind of questioned my dad's art you know because oh the, who's this chubby guy right here like you know why is he teaching i don't think he has the skills for like you know all that and so mm -hmm. it was like a it was like a challenge kind of thing but then at the same time when i was like when i was little and i saw that i saw my brother kind of really just you know like stick up for my dad showing how he performed all the techniques exactly as how my dad was also teaching me and then that and and then that got me serious like oh I can really do that. I just got to work hard at it, but I could really do that because <laughs> if he can do it, I can do it too. And then that's when I started becoming a lot more serious with it. And then that's when the whole sparring thing happened was, you know, all, ever since it was always been focused on sparring. And so it was in terms of formal training, everything was based through sparring, mm. all sparring. And then if there was any kind of like training where one on one, it would just be more of after sparring that we would go over like the details of what like what techniques were like making me like say like exposing myself like let's say the sides or like the arms like I'm too open things like that and then that's when you would go into detail with it okay you got to do this you got to do that and then he would show techniques and then back again to to spar okay, and everything okay. so it's always a, a lot of um that so formal training I wouldn't really say but just a lot of like sparring really yeah, kind of Training in, in, training in disguise. <laughs> basically, basically, yeah. No, I'm just going to take a quick, uh, wow, we got a bunch of people here watching. Uh, Jamie Moore, say Alex, Greg Ham, Carlos Castro, hey, Dennis Soriano, John Mister, where do you all practice? Uh, Guru, uh, Maestro John, um, uh, Guru Vico's in Dallas. And Guru Jeff is in San Diego. Um, so, yeah, actually, uh, Guru Vico is very close to you. Uh, Casey, hey, Dar, Brian Rodriguez, hey, and Bon Sariga. Okay. Oh, one. <laughs> okay, so let's. Craig, brother Craig. What's that? And. Um, Guru Jeff, just, um, you know, one of the things that we were talking about in the uh, test run, I guess, say, was, uh, you know, you know, if you're shorter or what have you and, you know, trying to make some of the techniques applicable and functional and all that. So what I figured I would ask you is, is uh, within the KI, adaptation to body types, you know, what, what can you tell us on that? Um, that's pretty much what I deal with every day. <laughs> okay, well, great. Uh, okay. All of my students are taller than me. <laughs> I don't have a student that's exact, exactly my size. So I, I have to apply that all the time. And uh, one of the things that Master Topper and, and uh, Guru Brandon has taught me is that uh, to, to understand Tatumbao well, and how to angle uh, and approach uh, the individual uh, that way. You know what I'm saying? What, mm. That's one of the things I love about AI, personally, is because, uh, and I, I understand that some some people tend to think that KI is uh, for tall people only or some, some something like that. You know, maybe I'm biased because I'm shorter. <laughs> but uh, in my opinion, <laughs> In my opinion, um, as far as um, I'm concerned, it's really irrelevant. It, it's a matter of understanding the principle. Mm, you know, yeah. say it, it really, yeah. Obviously, if you're the there is the um, the advantage of reach. We get that. We understand that. I understand that part of it. But but the, just the way uh, uh, the way Ki handles the the timing distance and um, the angle is for me uh, very gratifying because that, as long as I've studied it and stuff like that, really, it still reveals to me certain things. You know, mm. certain move, body movements, just, just by turning a certain way actually gets me out of a strike. You know, but that stems from understanding, again, the beginning of, uh, like I said, Tapumbao. You know, that footwork of just getting out of the way. And Master Dover, yeah. as you guys know, was very big with moving, with just getting the footwork done. And, yeah. I, and, and I thank him for that because just the basic footwork actually alone 
opened up the avenue for me in terms of uh, dealing with height discrepancy. And by the way, that that's part of the demo that I'm going to do today. And I, I'd rather show you okay. than actually talk about it. But yeah, fantastic. Anyway, that's, that's my take on it. Sure. No, thank you. Uh, Guru Jeff, anything you like? Uh -oh. I'm, I'm sorry. Jeez. Guru Vico, anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, do yeah. you out. What's that? I can hear you, Dean. Down. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. I can't hear Dean. Oh. I can't hear any of you guys. Oh. Okay. Can you speak? Yeah. You can hear Hello. me, but you can. Hello? Yeah. Hello? No, you can't hear me. Okay. It's only me. <laughs> I can definitely hear you. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. There's no volume. Yeah. He's no going to have to come back in. Okay. Technical. Yeah, come back. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, you can have to dial back in. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. okay. Dial back in. No, Do you, I need to be Yes, no, you. Dean. You. Dean. <laughs> no, yeah. you. That's so funny. <laughs> can somebody message you? Maybe? The wonders of technology, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Next year. Next year. Okay. All right. So, uh, should I just um, answer yeah. Dean or should we for, for, sure, for yeah. Jeff? Do you want to dial back in? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. There you go. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, so yeah, on uh, oh yeah, look. Uh, uh, I mean, the old man, all, all our all our instructors, all our is all about measurement, right? It's it's the point of measurement. The tip of the sword can kill you. The very tip of the, of the sword can kill you, and the very belly of the sword can kill you. So that entire length there is is dangerous. And if and a true practitioner will utilize everything about the sword, the back of the sword, the side of the sword, the sharp points of the sword, the different parts of the sword, it can be used for many ways. And therefore, if you're finding someone with KI or with KI background, probably like other arts, measurement is number two because it's your life. Yeah, what you what, what, what Guru uh, Guru Jeff said. Right? If you, it's the, no matter your height or your, your no matter what how tall or small you are, it's when you, can, when you master measurement, um, you can win, and you, know, you can trick the guy into thinking that you're this close or that far. You're actually not, and then there's an opening, there's a gap, and it's taking advantage of the other fight. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's I agree with you. For me, Jeff's gonna have faith in guys like me, right? So you know, I have to do with someone like that as well if I'm finding someone like Jeff, right? Mm. You know I mean, yeah. who knows who to the side yeah, of me? No, who can be who's very tricky? Who can faint me? Right? Engaño. Google the things that happen. Yeah. I'm just talking about handling someone who's who, who what Jeff's strategy. See. So. But yeah, can I agree you, with you. Can okay. you hear us, Jeff? Yeah, I can hear you guys now. Okay, good, good, good. So, I guess one thing, um, now thank you, Guru Vico. Yeah. Um, just, and this could be for all of you, but I guess I'll start with Guru Brandon. But I guess the, if there was a net, I don't know if negative would be the right word, but obviously the longer you have, the longer also your recovery is. So, I guess you could look at that as, a potential disadvantage? Uh, what What's your guys feel on that? I mean, I know reach is great and all that, but the longer I go out, the longer that retraction is. I mean, correct? Uh, like in some, it's 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 more of like a yes, it's correct. But then it really depends on the person how they throw the strike. Meaning, okay. they really like like give it their all. Of course, like the more they extend, it takes them a while to come back. But if they just kept it short because it really, it really depends how a person's what their intent is meaning are they planning on swinging it or are they just cutting it because if you're just cutting it it's, it's a shorter one but if you're swinging it it goes all the way through which in turn i mean you get them far better reach of course so it really just depends it's just more of from how i always saw it especially always like sparring also with like taller guys guys my height things like that like we for us to really reach for the guy we really had to compensate a lot by really moving in, focus a lot heavily on the work. So really our goal is to try to get in. Because of course, like the taller guys, main thing is to just stay out. Because then once we're actually inside like the range, I mean, like once they're in our range, like in our game, which is always trying to get close, 
then it's a whole different story. But when I say getting close, it doesn't mean, especially for um, KR and everything, it doesn't mean where we're just facing each other and just hitting. No, it's not exactly like that. It's more of we get in close the moment they're, they threw in their first strike. The moment the first strike is already out, the moment they're at a disadvantage, then that's when we'll come in. If we're still here trying to get in at them, we're still at a disadvantage. We always have to wait for that opportunity when they throw that first strike or second strike or any kind of opportunity that involves them immediately moving mm. and having their arm say like pinned down. Okay. Say. So it really depends on that. But yeah, for the most yeah. part, it's it, it's more of a lot of studying the opponent, and then at the same time, a lot more on being able to really get in there. If you can't, then you got to practice your footwork of really coming in and coming out, coming in, coming out, or let's say like sidestepping, like things yeah. like that. I think you know, and just going from uh, from the Omeko lens, because that's Caballero, the Campo, and Ki, and they seem to both stress recovery. You know what I mean? Um, is is what I found anyhow. Like it, you know, heavy stress on recovery, not in leaving this out there, not crossing midline and leaving this exposed. You know, and all that. We got a question here from Paolo. Hey, what other FMA system do you feel complements Ki well? Who wants to take a stab at it? Well, for me. Personally, um, uh, to be honest, like any system really works well with, I mean, to be honest, it's not being like picky with it, like with each one. It's more of any system really works well with each other. It just really depends on how you interpret it or how you like translate it in terms of your movement or like sparring again, because not everyone moves the same way. For example, let's say, uh, so I'm just thinking at the top of my head, let's say Dos Paris, and then you take Ilustrissimo. Like, you know, you could still learn a thing or two about like from one another. Like it's still gonna complement each other no matter what. It's, mm. it's every like it's it's more of like different systems because I if I remember because with illustration we stay more of long range. Uh, Dulce Paris, I'm not too familiar. I mean, like I've seen like with everything also like met up with a uh, with a bunch of guys also from uh, the San Diego area and they're also from Temecula. Is that um with them it's like you know in terms of like the close range I guess you could say. But there was a time when um, there was an FMA Unity, I think back in 2015 or 2014 was when we met up with them. And it was just more of uh, an exchange, you could say, where like no matter what, we were like learning from each other in a way. But let's say, for example, whether it's like learning how to like distance or let's say seeing how it is, what happens if we get in, like, into close range or things like that. But to be honest, whatever you learn, whether it's like Malintawa, Los Ipares, like lightning scientific, Lameco, things like that. It's, I mean, anything really. Like, there's okay. no, like, okay. it's only this one or that one. No, I mean, anything really works well. You okay. just gotta learn how to, like, adapt to it. Yeah. Anybody else want to add to that? Are we good? Okay. I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, I was just gonna say, uh, I, I personally like Iran. Mm. Uh, I, I like their larger model style. Uh, I think they they parallel well with with uh, KI. You know, okay. From what I've seen, yeah, I like I like the way that they uh, very precise with their strike. Reminded me that that KI flavor of not speed or whatever, but mm. they have that precise. I appreciate about it. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's got one. Can't hear you very well. I oh, know. I was so. Uh, I don't know who has dogs barking in the background. Here, maybe it's Guru Vika. Did you have anything? Um, you know, I, I any any system can really. Uh, you can always find something to complement uh, But from my experience only, because I haven't experienced others, the ones I've experienced, one is uh, lightning scientific. Mm -hmm. uh, the power of the hips moving, long range striking, moving to the side of the hand, thing called cambiado or cambio, which is really, really almost close, close to the Um That's because of the guys who I train mostly with in Davao, which is Manolo del Rosario Bagani. Shout ah. out to 
and uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Ryan Cordero, and then the other ones also because of the because of what I've seen is uh, Sarada system, no hangers and just the you know the Sarada clothing, clothing mm -hmm. the as well. Um, you know, closing the second strike um, the concept, um, I think it complements there too. But again, that's experience. But Brandon said any any other styles would would be able to help complement it. All right. Yeah. No, fantastic. Thank you for the question, Paolo. Um, all right, let's uh, let's move on to do, 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 do. Guru Vico. Um, uh, just tell us tell us about what you like and appreciate about this sanction. Like you came aboard. I mean, like I know you you were with. Uh, Master Ricketts in the past and all that, but what made you really want to help? Um, I don't want to say get off the ground because it's already off, but like you know, bringing them you aboard. You know, like why were you um, why were you so accepting? Oh, and for for this uh, for the sanction we have right now, all three of us. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it was just a combination of of, of many variables. Um, one was uh, that when I was here back in 2012, I, I was teaching, um, and so and I had some great students, awesome ones in Tennessee. And since I was back, um, and then when I went to the Philippines again for four four years, I was just so busy, too much that I couldn't train the weekend. I was going to teaching here at the Time to four times a week. So, so when I got back, I wanted to say, "Hey, let me get back to it more than I was doing it in the Philippines." And then, second was that um, I was noticing that uh, there was no, like, just no prominent dimension of Master Tooper's uh, uh, legacy or style. So I said, maybe it's time to, you know, I was just thinking there should be one, and I was always wanting to drive one, drive one in Australia. I have good friends that wanted to do it. You know, one of them is David Covey, you know that. He was really saying, you know, Master Tupert's uh, legacy needs to, be, needs to jump out right now. And he really, really could help me conv uh, get convicted on that. And then what so happened, for God, you know, Brandon started coming out. And I said, okay, there it is. There's the channel. So all those three mm -hmm. combinations. Okay. Uh, whereas, you know, just to just fortify the decision. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, so... Uh... Guru Jeff, I'm obviously you. You, I mean, you were obviously very happy that he came aboard, right? I mean, what do you have? To yep, absolutely. I mean, we yeah. we always pick his brains, and uh, we know that he, he adds uh, another dimension to what we want to do. You know, mm -hmm. which is to preserve dance, um, Master Topa Ricketts' uh, legacy. You know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. that's basically. And uh, we know that he has a good heart. We we know that yeah. he, he really loves Topher, and that 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 speaks volumes of, of uh, the type of person he is. So yeah, absolutely. We were yeah. we were very much elated and uh, uh, excited, you know, to see what what would happen in the future when when he came aboard. So absolutely. Yeah, it's like a, you got a team, and you get this like all pro quarterback who's joining, you know, and the rest of the team is like, yeah. <laughs> but just uh, just from a personal experience, you know, just uh, training under, uh, you know, I, I consider training on all under you guys collectively, but, you know, seeing Guru Vico in person, all that, he's just wonderful teacher, patient, um, you, know, I, you know, and all that. I, I can't say enough about him. You know, I mean, in fact, I'm looking forward to, which will be more of a week and a half uh, tomorrow. And uh, it's just been wonderful. Uh, very, you know, very patient, very kind, gives you his best, you know, uh, very giving. Great, you know, obviously. It's a, great, it's a great reflection of Master Topper, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely you know? something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, that's, cool. that's pushing it, bro. <laughs> so, but, uh, so, Guru Brandon, I mean, did you reach out to him, or is it kind of just through talk? It kind of just manifested? No, uh, at first, 
It was uh, it was just me and Guru Jeff just talking, and then um, like uh, I'm, I'm, like sometimes like my it's usually like my older brother and uh, Guru Vico would uh, like talk and things like that. But then I, when I got a message from Jeff saying I, you know, like Guru Vico like wants to like like hop in, like he wants to like join like join in and really like help us out and everything. I was like, oh shit, I was oh, oh sorry, <laughs> excuse me, almost like oh, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh wow, like I, I didn't I didn't know. And so like right away like, got together and then all that it just keeps going. So it was, it was really, sorry for the viewers, my bad about that. See, that's, that's that's exactly how it felt. I got excited. That's really what it was. I because okay. it came out of nowhere. I was like, oh. And then at least now we can really like discuss about everything. So it's nice also like having a like another one who was also like with the, with the same experience as well, like really at the top. So it, it, it's yeah, nice. Yeah. It's nice also. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. You guys, uh, you guys seem to make a good team. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Guru Brandon, so you had a big day today. So let's hear about the day and significance of today and um, and why you did it, I guess, for the viewers. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yes. Uh, well, for us, it's, uh, well, Philippine time. It was yesterday. For you guys, it was uh, today. Oh, but, uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But for um, because what happened was uh, like I met up with the uh, Kira group, like headed by mm -hmm. Master Arso, mm -hmm. and together I was also with uh, like a uh, Guru uh, Duran Sordo, Guru Russell, and also uh, like Guru Ramon as well. So we were just all just talking and discussing. A lot of it is just more of because the reason why I would always like uh, I would always meet up with them. It's more of so we could form. Like in terms of like the terminology and techniques, because of course a lot of it was more of how I understood it, and then also how like in terms of Master Tony's branch, like how it was understood. So a lot of it has to be more of let's say like techniques, like the names of the techniques. Mm. Like back in the day, it was always like added on, meaning there's like a long word for like a technique. Let's say you do like a let's say you do a pluma, and then you do like a like a counter for you say a pluma vertical or something a pluma bug sock or things like that for us like how it was like how, that's how it was back in the day where it was always more of like it, it was longer in terms of like the words but okay. then um, okay. but then how it was with my dad it was more of like as the years went by it was like just a shortcut meaning it was easier to remember if we just called it okay pluma and then whatever counter that followed we'll just say oh that's the counter but then we always called it as pluma for example you have the estrella and then whatever like counter that was added on, then that was what the name of the technique was. But for us, it was just Australia. So it was more yeah. of seeing, it was nice how, like, like actually like in terms of the terminology, when um, let's say I'm doing, let's say a socket or like a florete, then they would start going, about, going off about um, how it's part of like this same technique of the family and then it branches out. Mm -hmm. so it was interesting actually like seeing that, it's more of, at least with the techniques that we, we go through, it's like it's similar like in terms of okay so we also have like the same thing it was just like more like it was it, it, it was it was i guess you could say it was like shortcutted in a way where it was easier okay. to remember that's why with my dad back in the day i even have like videos of him over here that's why he has so much videos it's because my dad couldn't really remember the the terms as well it's really that but the movement right off the bat muscle memory things yeah, like that yeah, it's right, right. Right. Movement, it was mostly up uh, Australia, something, something, something. And then we would just go Australia, and that's how he was able to remember it. But then mm -hmm. after like seeing all the videos, you know, that's why my like growing up, I would always see my dad going going back and forth with all the videos and all the how I call like the hidden scrolls, the secret scrolls <laughs> that he has and things like that. But um what's nice about it is going back into it like every single time. Because you know, you already learned like so much throughout the years. And then of course, like throughout those years, you tend to forget some things. Then if someone does it, it's like, oh yeah, I remember doing that. I remember doing this. Oh yeah, now we're, yeah, that's what it was called. So that's why with the videos right here, always going back and forth, seeing that okay, the technique I was I'm teaching is exactly how it was also before. Of course, there's a little bit of modification, meaning interpretation, because making it work for my body type, like what okay. uh, Guru okay. Jeff is going about, like in the beginning of the interview. Right. And so right. what's nice about it, it's more of like how we how how we're showing the system now is more of. So we show the, how the technique is like originally, and then we show it in our way, like interpretation of how it makes, we make it work for us. Mm. Meaning body type, more 
emphasis on the full work, things like that. So uh, that was the one things like we were like discussing uh, with the Kiro group. And then a lot of it just really more forming a unity because with my dad and master Tony, you know, they did it the same way. So why yeah. not the next generation, you know, like, yeah. you know, the son and also like with uh, master Arnold over there. So why not? So that's, I mean, we, we have like really uh, big plans, like especially like in the next year to come, like in the years to come and everything, it's like, you'll see like a big change really like with how oh, the industry is going. Mm -hmm. So excited so, for that, but of course I can't tell all of it yet, but you know, you'll, yeah, you'll see yeah. it so, as you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So safe to say you'll I'm be not, seeing him again, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm seeing him later yeah. today, actually. <laughs> oh, all right, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, good to hear, yeah. good to hear. So uh, you guys obviously uh, must be excited as well. Uh, Guru Vico, since you had affiliation with and time with uh, GM Tony, you, you must be happy to hear this. Oh yeah, um, it's it's been, uh, I'm so just happy that there's, uh, it's just, it's always been there's always been back and forth, you know, all the time, but with Guru with, with Guru Brandon leading it, and and then also um, stand there's some standardization that's starting to come out. Um, it, it's it's just great, but specifically with the with with the two styles, like the two not styles, but the two approaches, mm -hmm. and they're not very very different from each other, right? Some is just semantics, some is just the words. But what's going to come out of it is is just something that, if you say if you know, it's it's the truth and it's like the truth expounded, you know, okay. um, and and that's what's going to come out, right? It, you know, you, you know, you have all these these, these terms of the five pillars, the five pillars, or seven pillars, whatever it is, they all had were were around the sun, right? Which is the grand. Mm. The, 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 so the more you start to see those those. The planets that used to go revolve around it, the more you understand the sun. See, so it's, okay. it's, that's how. It is. No, it's a neat analogy. Yeah. Guru Jeff, you you happy as well? Any thought uh, thoughts? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, you know just the the, the mere fact that uh, there's uh, a bridge between group this group particularly mm -hmm. is uh, a plus. I mean, just the knowledge and and uh, the the experience that they can uh, you know share, you know, mm -hmm. both parties. Like, it's all a plus. You know, what I'm saying I don't see any any bad thing about that. Yeah, I think it'll make it stronger as a group. You know, and it'll make us uh, go forward uh, in in the future. You know, with, with a more stable base. You know what I'm saying? Not, not yeah. so much as dif uh, diffusion or confusion and whatnot, but there's like a underlying uh, consistency throughout, you know, the groups and stuff. I think it's a, it's a great, great event. Definitely. Yeah. No, I, I think it'll, I think it's just going to bring KI as a whole more to the forefront. You know what I mean? So, you know. Yeah. So I think that's uh, yeah. We got a question here yes. from Mark Flores Brand. When are you visiting Cali again? Have you thought of doing a seminar with the other KI groups? Um, Guru Arnold, Master Yuli, Master Ray, and etc. I guess first part. Are you coming back to California? Oh are yeah. You? Okay. In fact, yeah, oh. California is still home, but of course, like once the pandemic is over, and then yeah. I can really fly out because I gotta make sure I visit a uh, Guru Jeff. Gotta check out with the guys, you know, and then also mm -hmm. go to Dallas. Yeah. Also, we meet up with Guru Vico, you know. Yeah, don't go now. <laughs> yeah. We all go to Cali, you know, either one. But yeah. most likely, probably like next year, as uh, if everything goes well with with everything that's going on. Yeah, you know, yeah. All this miserable mess. And um, yeah. any thoughts of doing a seminar with the other KI groups was part two. I haven't really thought about more of like the seminar. I was thinking if ever if it was a seminar, I'd rather have it where if it's in person as opposed to online. If ever like a reunion, you could say happen where each of them mm -hmm. are, are going. So let's yeah. say like Master Yuli, Master Ray, and then also like with Tony Yeager's branch with, with Master Arnold and then with me for my dad's branch. So it's more of um hopefully 
again, like if everything go, goes well with everything, I'd rather do it where it's in person as opposed to online. No, I no, feel like sure. yeah. more. Plus, you'll be the yeah. people will really get to feel of how yeah. this is and see like the different interpretations of each branch. So it'll be nice to see, actually. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be for all of you, but. Um, We'll bounce back to Guru Jeff. So Guru Jeff, um, you teach any of the uh, Bakan Bakan and with your group? Uh, Bakan, uh, no, actually, we're we're concentrating uh, on KI solo. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Experience with uh, Master Topper in the Bakan stuff, like Tagasa and uh, Gocho. And whatnot, but I, I don't feel like I, I have the qualification to even approach that. I, I leave that to my seniors. No, yeah, no, no. They, I was just, uh, I was just curious if you incorporated yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah, no. Of course, no. Yeah. Their, their flavor, the flavor is there and stuff like that. But in terms of like the whole curriculum and whatnot, I, I'm not really, uh, you know, privy to that. Uh, when Master Topper taught me, and uh, during that time, it was pure illustrissimo. Okay. You know, okay. so with a little battering of, of Sagasa and Gocho, you know, I, okay. and he was so he was so giving, you know. I mean, he he gave me you know previews of all those systems he had. He had so much. I mean, I couldn't absorb it. You know, what I'm saying mm. it's like he was just so so giving. So uh, uh, at the last. You know, um, or the the finally, you know, he told me, he pulled me aside and said, you know, Jeff, I'm just going to concentrate KI with you, you know, because okay. I just couldn't absorb it all. You know, I'm saying yeah, it's yeah, much. Yeah. No, no, so, no, no. You know, I, I'm happy with what I got. You know, and I'm, of course with Guru Vico coming in and and Guru Brandon starting to open up the buck buck and stuff. Of course, I'm I'm open to. To that treasury chrome, you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. the more, more, more for me to learn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Guru Brandon, are you planning? I mean, slowly but surely, making that more public. That information, are you going to incorporate it, or so will it be two separate modules per se? So it's more of because with the whole uh, with the whole buck back and especially here, because. Bakbaka, I, I feel, is more of um, just how it's always understood. Some people always like getting confused, like say Bakbaka is a style, but more of Bakbaka is you could say like a group where the the style is within that group. Meaning you have sagasa, mm -hmm. you have okay. mocho, you have boxing, you have like muay thai, you have kickbox, and then that's and then when coming to blade work, you have illustrissimo, or in terms of like with master ray as well, the other systems. So it really, uh, you know, it really depends on that. But for me over here, um. Actually, teach like two separate groups where w there's a group here that just wanted to focus on illustrissimo. I'm mm. like, okay, yeah, that's fine. But then I also have another group in Makati that focuses a lot more on like want to do more empty hands. That's where like more like sagasa would really mm. come in. Okay. But again, like, with all these, like this is something I've I've been trying to incorporate. I like slowly as I go because of course, like with everything that's going on. Mm. Um, it's more of slowly getting it out there, but at the same time, just keeping it, keeping the group small, that as they start get, getting into it, and then that's when we just slowly, like, re I guess you could say, release it to the yeah, public. Yeah, I think it'd be, uh, I think it'd be kind of neat if you, you know, whether you make it two separate things, or I'm guessing and all that, but I think it'd be neat for, yeah. for, the, for the people to see it. It's kind of like, a, I don't know if mystique, is the correct yeah. word, but you, you you always heard the term, you've seen the symbols and all that, but I don't think a lot of people really understand what it's about. And the only reason I got to understand what it's about was through Guru Vico. And the mm -hmm. interview, of course, with um, uh, Guru Duran and Lance, then I got a better understanding and all that. Yeah. But I think some people out there, it's still kind of like that steep group, you know what I mean, that were known for heavy sparring, but really maybe don't know much uh, much other than that you know um so i, I think it'd be kind of neat for people you know um the guru vico do you plan to i mean you have it you plan to release you know with your students or depending on what they want or what have you what's what's your plans with it for sagasa 
and it, all, all the everything else are just uh well for, Sagasa and anything else i guess yeah sure sure uh well, right now the the prime um the prime goal as a team is to is to have our is to have our curriculum um set so if you train with me or, or guru, guru jeff of course guru brandon it's the same the same yeah, testing okay. Modules and stuff like that, um, but of course, you know you'll have you know you know in one lesson it's not always this is what we have to do every time. You know you'll oh, have right, these right, right. just like this is where you can do sagasa. Sagasa helps here, mocho helps here, and then maybe you know once in a while you'll have a lesson where okay guys, no, let's warm up using the sagasa footwork, right? Or sagasa. Mm. Footwork. This is great, by the way, if you want to get your legs and your hips warmed up, yeah. The low you showed me was. was with your your ki after that and you're really mm. you got your you got your movement in your footwork and then your your weapons come in afterwards now but um as a formal training class i i still have not thought enough about it but you can slip it in there in the during the ki class but uh but as a standard sagasa class uh, no, and i haven't really uh and then i still also would like to also hold myself accountable to some folks in the philippines who also really uh, who also really uh, are part of the original Sagasa uh, masters, mm -hmm. and one of them is Johnny Pintoy. If you don't know him, he's the brother of Roland Dantes. Um, but uh, he, you know, those are the guys who were like with Doc Langson, first level Doc Langson. Oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. And okay. Wow. Um, before that, obviously, have to brush up, make sure I'm I'm doing it right. I have videos. No, but it takes a while if I'm gonna we're gonna make that decision. For now, it's the yeah, case. Yeah. yeah, no, good enough, good enough. Um, let me see here. Let's because um, we're just right on schedule with the demos and everything. Um, and I gotta get the Elric's questions. All right, Guru, um, this you know we can anybody can touch on this, but I guess we'll start with Guru Vigo and, and all that. Uh, we could just, you know, for, again, those who might not have seen this and all that, but Master Tuber, you know, maybe those who haven't seen the previous episodes, what have you, um, him as an instructor and his relationship with others and what have you. What, what can you tell us? Um, well, his, his, so first of all, if you're going to train under, under uh, Guru Brandon's father, it's, you're probably end up going to start full contact day one. I mean, it doesn't matter what your background is. Yeah. Even if the guy's going to throw you if I say, take it easy a little bit. Let's just see what this guy's got. And then <laughs> that throw you in there. You know, and then he'll go. And then sometimes he has this technique. I remember, you know, it's like, you come in and you want to try it out. He'll, oh, he'll, he'll, you know, you get excited because he Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, no, no right? I, uh, I can't hear myself. <laughs> You're, I don't know who you're I can't punching. Hear them at all. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. You lost you again, buddy. Uh, Am I the only one that's not being heard? I'll put you in. I'll yeah. Just, yeah. we got a message in to come back in. Jump. This means jump out of the end again. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I thought uh, I would have some problems. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Going on. It's just um, unfortunately. Uh, I, I mean, not that I'm. It's just him. I don't know what's going on. Uh, sadly, but I'm right, yeah. sorry about that. Go, right, go no, ahead. I'm no, sorry. No, no. So yeah. So uh, you know, he would. He would. You'd see him. You know, Can I feel your kick? Can I feel you? And he would just test you if you knew how to punch. If you knew, if you had some power. But you know, Master Duper, tell you one thing. His eye for movement is so sharp. He'll know right away if you've been training a lot if you're if you're intermediate or if you're good at what you do or you can be very good he'll know right away and it, and he'll you know he'll he'll has and you probably with the word ken koi ken koi means like oh you know this guy doesn't really know how to fight mate he's just talking you know so but you know <laughs> you know you're in, and he'll throw you in there um but that anyway the point is it's uh -huh. it's it's hard training it's repetition to the max uh -huh. he's always got a a stopwatch around his neck always always yeah. anytime you have to be ready three minutes okay one one round do that and you're doing one round of just outside dodging outside dodging outside dodging, mm. three minutes. repetition repetition um and then sparring sometimes you'd spar before the drill sometimes you'd spar then warm up it's a but uh man you come out tired you come out but you, you come out 
what, what comes out of you is a, a fighter. I've seen him in pencil necks like me before into fighters. Or the fighting spirit, not always, you don't necessarily have to win every fight, but if he sees you getting back up again and going at it again, you've mm -hmm. got his, his respect, I'm telling you. Oh, so okay. I remember you, remember you mentioning that, yeah. Yeah, as long as yeah. you showed heart and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Also, he's a strickler for form, right? He's, you know, he doesn't like you getting emotional. Um, isn't, you know, welcome pick on, welcome pick on, you know, that's what he said. Don't get so pissed off in a fight. It's, he'll call it, he'll be like your coach. In, in, while you're sparring, he starts telling you, you know, come pick on, you know, keep your guard up, close your mouth, don't stick your tongue out, all those things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but he's, he's great because he's your coach, he's your master, um, and it's really intimate training. Mm -hmm. It's really about, but, you know, you don't get like, okay, everybody line up. You do that in the beginning, right? But then eventually it becomes very close, like real training. It's not like some people who they say, you know, they, they, they train, in KI, but all they did was go to Luneta and they just watched the old man for like hours and then maybe hold something. And then, oh. you know, that's not training, okay? Yeah. So, but master would really train you and he was your master, he was your teacher, he would fix your form, he make you repeat things, mm. right? And he'd try to get you to apply it in full pressure. That's wow. what master took. Wow. Guru Jeff, anything like that? Uh, I, I just want to say, uh, yeah, absolutely. With, with Master Topper, uh, he, he's very generous. In my experience, uh, he's always been, uh, you know, open with, if you show um, the spirit, and just like um, Guru Vico was saying, if you show that you really are interested, he will show you. He will, he will not hold back. It's up to you as a student to absorb mm. it. So that's why when I say he um, a few minutes ago, that was too much. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I had to like concentrate on one thing because he was so generous, you know. And mm. when he did uh, AI with me, that that's basically what what he did was he just worked it details. I mean the 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 foot how how it's supposed to be, uh, how you hold your stick, how you hold your blade, how you turn your, how you rotate the wrist, how you, you rotate the hip in conjunction with the footwork, all that, you know, he, he, he took the time, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's why whatever, whatever level I, I attained, I owe it all to him. I owe it all to his, um, great teaching and great mentorship uh, along with uh Guru brandon uh being like that you know what i'm saying it, it's rare like i said it's very rare to find a high-ranking uh individual to do that yeah. you know what i'm saying it, it's very so that's yeah. why uh me myself and Guru Guru vico and uh, Guru brandon we're we're very much a product of our instructor yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. we we'd like I, to yeah, that. Sure. You know, I want to add something real quickly to what Jeff just said. You sure. know, um, it's it's a in some schools it's really a privilege that be if to come into a school on your first day, martial arts school, on the first day, to be taught by the master for thirty minutes an hour. It's it's a privilege. Because sometimes you, they just leave you with the with the beginners. Sometimes you'll get that too, right? Oh, patuda mo si ano, right? And then teach him that. But then let him master troopers right there with the guy who just came in. Mm. Um, yeah. Also, being able to spar with the senior guys, I mean, that's also a privilege. And and that's what happens in Bakbakan. You come inside, and you know, you, and you, and someone's coming in. All of a sudden, he's he's he. They're sparring. The guys have been there for a long time, and that's also a privilege. But that's that's exactly what you get in uh, in in uh, Sounds like an awesome setting. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, Guru Brand, you grew up with this. So, anything yeah. you <laughs> anything you you want to add to what your uh, compadre said? I mean, with everything, also like with my dad, it's really just the whole how he really takes care of his students or people, either one. It's more of he really takes care of them. 
like whether you're just coming in just like that. If he could teach you illustration in the like the whole system of illustration in a day, he would. It was always like that. Even feedback mm -hmm. from students, like they were already going through like the hours already, like three, four hours. And they would say like, Master Rick, it's like, it's like can I get a break real quick? Cause it's, it's just too many things to process in my head. It, it was always like that. Cause my dad just mm -hmm. always wanted to give. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, that. like once he's already given like so many stuff and then he's like, okay, let's watch videos now. And that's, it just still keeps going so you can see like where it all came from. Yeah, it's always been like that. <laughs> One of the things in my life, no break in between. Yeah, there's yeah. there's no break. And even like in sparring, he could say where, yeah. you know, let's say it's a it's a three minute round. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, he goes like, oh, last 10 seconds of the round. All right, cool. Next thing you know, it's like, it's been 10 seconds. And then he goes, oh, last 10 seconds. And then after, next thing you know, he's like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I meant last five seconds. I was like, oh, okay. And the next thing you know, it's already been like five minutes or so. Like with the uh, Baklaken guys, they normally call it as um, two for time. So you already know it's not going to be last 10 seconds, but last 10 minutes. They could say, yeah. So it's, I mean, it, it teaches you how to have heart. It really what it's like. That's when he really checks whether or not you're, because if he knows you can still you can still push yourself, he would. If he knows that you're already that tired, then okay. But he knows when you still have something to look, like else to give, so he yeah. really pushes yeah. for that. Oh, that's oh, man. man. So, all right, let's get. I just want to get to Elric's questions before the demos, and I have them here. If I'm not mistaken, I believe there are three. So, first question, and I guess. First, let me just make sure there's three questions. And there are, perfect. Okay, so maybe I'll get just each one a question. All right, now you guys can decide. Well, here, you know what? Let me go through the questions. You guys can decide which one, who wants what. See if that'll work. First question, what have been the, the biggest challenges in terms of gaining personal proficiency and sparring using the techniques of the system? Question one. Question two, what have been the biggest challenges in gaining sparring proficiency for their students? Question two. Last question. Over the years, folks have written about how unique KI is, and also we have that too. What techniques and core concepts do you think are unique to KI? So who wants to take first question? Any, anyone? I'll take it. You guys good? I'll take it. All right. So the first one was, um, what was it? It was about like proficiency in sparring. Yeah, the biggest challenge is in terms of gaining personal proficiency in sparring using the techniques of the system. Like more of, because uh, with me back in the day, uh, especially and even even now, whenever I'm trying to test out like um, uh, sparring techniques to make sure like which ones really work, the uh, the biggest challenges have always been more of when like how to really let's say do it like really like full speed where you're really getting hit meaning okay let's say for example i'm starting it in normal stance mm. or really trying to understand okay how can i pull this off things like that i mean there's been a lot where um like there was a, a bunch of uh, a lot of frustrations where i couldn't really pull it off no matter what i do i can really pull it off and that's when like that's when also like with my older brother, this is what before I started figuring out a lot about more of like body type, height difference, reach, things like that. Because a lot of it worked for the other students. It was easier for them to pull off. Mm. But then for me, it was harder. So it like it was of course like you know, like frustrating. Also being like, you know, like 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 your instructor trying to like show you the technique, but then try to pull it off in sparring. They can pull it off better than you can. And that's when I started to realize, okay, there has to be a factor that I can put in. Until I was talking with my older brother, uh, Master Bruce uh, Bruce Ricketts, is that um, he started I, when I was watching how he was doing it. It wasn't so much of him like telling me; it was more of him just showing me, like through how he would spar with other people. So that's when it started clicking. Where okay, I noticed that I would have to work harder, meaning in terms of footwork, where it's you can't just also do it when you're just also facing someone like just straight like dead on. If you're slightly off center, it it can actually add more to uh, it, it actually like it will help you pull off your technique more so for example a lot of it let's say was the me trying to do a frylet technique mm. frylet technique trying to do it in sparring like if someone's going in fast it was it was harder 
it, it was hard because they, they had the reach. I couldn't really get it in. And that's when I started re realizing like, okay, so I start, I, we started doing what my brother called like more of a cheat step when you're kind of like already, you're still in center, but your, your leg is kind of already off center. So it looks like you're still here, but in reality, you're already here. So the mm. moment like the leg is coming in, the movement is what really helped me get through it. So even if I'm doing the Friday, because back in the day, if you're just center doing the Friday, you'd still get hit. Mm. I mean, from my personal experience, no matter how tight or how fast I was, I was still getting hit because I could never get the, get the range down. But then with the help of footwork already starting halfway, like with the cheat step, then when the strike came in and me doing it, it actually came a lot more natural where, but I really focused a lot more on the hips where Sagasa Sorry. came in. Because of my understanding with Sagasa and how the hip movement was how my dad like emphasized heavily on the hips, I was able to really like execute the techniques needed for me to actually really get the mastery of let's say doing fraile or even like pluma, okay, okay. even let's say for the sumbra or reverse sumbra, things like that. It was really a lot more of like like nonstop, always trying it out, testing it out. Videotaping yourself always helps because you'll see what mistakes you do. Mm. And especially when you have someone who can actually also like see. Because like if you're just doing it by yourself, of course it's different. But you have someone also looking from the out from outside the corner, kind of like kind of like the corner men. Then they yeah, can see yeah, what yeah, you're yeah, doing yeah, right yeah. and wrong. Yeah. It's really that. So if you have like also someone to help you out, it it, it really like helps. Uh, it really is a big help. But if you don't, the, the videotaping really helps out. Okay. It's, okay. It's, it's, I mean, just something to kind of just keep in mind, especially like for everyone who's always trying to test things out, if they get frustrated, things like that. I mean, it's, there's always a way around it. You just got to work and really like think yeah, more yeah, like yeah. what else can I do. Yeah. Creative. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Second question was. What have been the biggest challenges in gaining sparring, sparring proficiency for their students? Who wants to tackle that one? Vico, oh. go ahead. I, I, I guess I can do it. I mean, really is uh, the biggest challenges for students, no? Correct. Um, to really, really understand one of them is to the big challenge for sparring. So if, one thing is to let them understand what really happens um, when you're fighting, when it's a real fight, right? Um, there's no, you know, it's exactly what, what Guru Brandon said. The speed is 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 is, is extraordinary. Anyone who comes from any side, right, who swings a stick, doesn't matter if they're good or not. It's fast, especially if they're pissed off at you. So. Um, in those contacts, in those dynamics, you know, you gotta, you just gotta let them know what really works, mm. right? Um, what really works and the basic work. And and one of the, the big challenges is to just let them just to continue, continue to always just say, hey, the basics, get the master the basics, master the basics. That's the stuff that's gonna get you out of a fight. Um, and then, and then once they establish that here or in their minds, then it's then, then, then allowing as a, as a, as an instructor to say, okay, um, this guy is tall, this guy is medium height, this guy is a little smaller, this guy has short arms, this guy has long arms, right? And then, you know, what they're, what, and then, fit, you know, saying, okay, this is going to work for you. This one's a little tough, but you can still pull it off, right? Because it's about, part of it is really taking to that journey to understanding themselves. Mm. Because then that's that's what we're there to to take to to help them guide. Of course, the art and and the and 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 the, the martial side of it, but also help guiding the students to really understand who they really are, right? And what really really works. And that being honest with themselves of like, okay, you know, I'm actually, you know, I, I like moving back and forth, or I like moving side, and I can come inside. I like long swords, I like short swords, or what they're good at. And then you just let them know, and they'll come to realize if you get the get them the basics. Then the, they'll pick out what what parts of the basics they can use in the fight, right? Of course, you have your standard, you know, hand evasion basics, footwork, right? Hand up, elbow in, all of that have to has to be in place, right? Uh -huh. You can't break from the foundation. You break the foundation, the whole thing collapses. Yeah, uh -huh. you can't the basics, right? and then they figure out who they are. That's the challenge, really. And once again, and then the next thing is also having the fighting spirit. 
Because one thing in KI is that it's not defensive. You know, the, the old man, and you know, what the, you'll see he's brave. There's a certain bravery in him because he actually comes towards that. Towards yeah, the I, mean, he, I know. Walks into the fire. Yeah, and no, no. He comes into it, moving to the side, but it's like that. But usually, normally, when someone's coming in, you just put your roof block, right? And then you yeah. just have respect. You just no, react no, like right? Dana Real, he's going yeah. into it. No, no. Yeah, a which requires a sense of bravery. Yeah, well, I, so I think so. <laughs> but that, yeah, that's right. probably the challenge is theirs. Just, you know, no, excellent. Question. Thank you. The last question is for Jeff. Over the years, folks have written about how unique KI is, and also we have that too. What techniques and core concepts do you think are unique to KI? Hmm. Um, just for me, uh, I think it's uh, directness. You know what I'm saying? Is it very direct? It doesn't bother itself with superfluous movement. That's why I saw the beauty of it. When Master Topa moved, everything is in its place. You, you, you see what I'm saying? There's a wasted movement. I, mm -hmm. You know, and, and I know some people say, yeah, well, our system has that too. Like, we don't waste a lot of movement. And then you see the move, and they're doing all this kind of stuff. Like, you know, I, that's, that's, you know, you know what I'm saying? It, it, I think that's what convinced me in terms of like just seeing Master Topo move uh, to to take on KI because it's true it, the the very that I was looking for is that uh, precise movement the the specific movement that he does it's like so evident that it's like undeniable you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so if anything else that that to me is is the unique thing about KI is that directness. You know, he's, uh, and, and it's kind of funny that this reminds me of like uh, this thing that they say is, uh, KI is more JKD than JKD. There's so much parallel between the two. Coming, having a JKD background, um, the, inter, the, the whole thing on intercepting, simply direct, directly simple, you know, um, you're taking the straight line. Um, you know, the five ways of attacks, you know, I get in arguments with some, uh, no, I shouldn't say a lot, but I have gotten in, I'll put it politely, verbal disputes <laughs> over the five ways of attacks, because in my opinion, FMA had the five ways of attacks before, you know, Bruce Lee did. And in the system in particular, KI, you know, attack by drawing, simple direct, progressive indirect, hand immobilization, attack by combination, guess what? Though so FMA had yeah. that, it's just that they didn't have a famous actor or, you know, or somebody in, you know, motion pictures. And nothing, not taking away, I don't want to get this misconstrued, taking it away from JKD. I mean, it was my first thing I did. And I still like it, still appreciate it. So I don't want, I don't want bombs, my messenger lighting up or bombs dropping down. But, you know, honesty is honesty. FMA had the five yeah. wave attacks. You know, long before. I mean, so, and I'm not saying other systems don't have it or didn't have it either. You know, but just because you, when you brought up JKD, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, well uh, I don't mean any disrespect, obviously. Oh, I know you don't. I no, I know, and that's why I wanted to clarify. I, I absolutely know you don't. So, but just so I, I jumped in, just so things didn't get misconstrued. You know what I mean? But I know, no, I know you don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, absolutely. Yeah, but, but my my point is that. Uh, the 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 theoretical stuff is mm. seen in KI. You see what I'm saying? No, I totally you know. I, says, I think it was a great uh, a great correlation. I totally agree with you. I, absolutely, I, yeah. I, absolutely. Yeah, there's so yeah. much. I mean, there's also, so much parallel. And and I've heard that mentioned I'm before. Sure that, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was done. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> kind of choppy there. 
<laughs> no, the only thing I was saying is no, I've heard that say. mentioned before, you know. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm just going to say that. Uh, and again, like I said, uh, that, that what I, in my opinion, that, that's what makes it different is that it doesn't rely on theoretical uh, foundation. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I actually did it. I mean, that, that in it itself is different. You know what I'm saying? Some system would say, well, uh, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So that, yeah. No. In my opinion, I, that, that. No, I, that was great. No, I, I enjoyed your answer. What about, as far as techniques, though, like, I'm just trying to think, because, you know, having done Sayoc, Atienza, the Anasano blend, um, Dose Paris, I don't recall the best. To my knowledge and memory, any of those systems having like media friday or friday as far as techniques are concerned, like I don't recall it seeing any of those systems have anything like that. Um uh you know, everybody's redondo. What's that? Salok. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Um one of the main things I've always noticed. Oh, yeah, the hanging stuff, the, hanging stuff, the, the lutang actually. I mean, so with the lutang, from from my experience, because for me, I've only solely, solely just trained in illustrismo. Like all my life, it was just illustrismo. That was the only thing that was exposed to me, or like in my vocabulary, you could say. But after also meeting with different students coming from different styles and everything, whenever I start showing them the hanging step or the lutang, or like the floating foot is how they'd say it. That's when they start seeing a difference. Like, wow, like that was the real, the footwork that really stood out because it was different. Mm -hmm. now, the thing with the lutang, let's say for example, if he's like with other styles doing it, okay, sure, like they have, they have their version of like the hanging step. But the thing is, I mean, as the years go by, you know, I mean, you'll see like videos and things like that of people like doing it. I don't want to say like you know, putting names out there and things like that. But one of the things with the hanging step with the lutang is that. With the lutang, actually, how pe how like how we see people doing it now, there's uh, there's more behind it. Meaning they just do the one step, but there's actually a two step involved to it. It's not just the whole like you just bring your foot back. No, there's more to it because it's a it's a leg strike. Meaning, depending on how you want to use it, if it's just because with tatang being so tall, his range is a lot farther. So just doing just the mm -hmm. one step. Is the one that really worked because he had the reach but what happens if someone was really coming after him the two-step happened see these are the things that people like you know tend to miss yeah. out it's those details because once they see it out online it's like okay it's that but in reality it's not mm -hmm. how i can also prove this is one i've done this like in terms of like, experience <laughs> like you know you had to move to really get out and two was the videos the videos that my dad took back in the in the late uh 80s early 90s mm -hmm. You see Tatan going through the explanation of the system saying how, okay, there's this step. And then afterwards, Master Tony saying how, like, you know, there was also that extra one. And then with my yeah, dad, also yeah. saying that Master Tony with Tatan's um, instruction, because of course it was more of, it was, the, the reach really played a, a big role. Mm -hmm. but with the Lutan, it's, it's those like tiny details. You see one thing, but there's more to it. It's not yeah, just that. No. To get explained in the video, no, no, see, actually meet like with an actual, um, like with with a with an street small practitioner, like then you'll see like start noticing the details because with everything that's going on like out there in the internet or like different instructors having their own interpretation, once you actually see like the real movement, meaning the 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 way that it's it, it was done with full details on how and explanation, right, right, then there it is. Like you'll like let the movement speak for itself. You could say. Like once you start getting into it, you know. No, it was, no, it was, that was well said. Um, so, uh, no, thank you for all that. Those were, uh, I thought those were great answers. Hopefully, um, Elric uh, hears those. Okay, any before we get to the demos, with any comments that you guys or topics that you guys would like to bring up. <laughs> yeah, go uh, go for it. Yeah. 
So you you asked before in your first question, you know, about what was it like training with Master Tuper and 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 who is you know mm. what was like with his with his friends. Okay, so he loved his friends. He loved his friends. He he gets really attached to them. He gets attached to his students as well. Um, you know, uh, calls them family. And and uh, a lot of his friends who are also there. A lot of them are masters now. And one in particular is uh, Guru Rodan Dantes, who has been a lot you know is is just been a great ambassador of of the art. And he has helped um, many masters, including Master Tuper, Master uh, Punugur Edgar, in many different ways. Um, and and it's what 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 I've noticed, and this comes together with with kind of like where we are right now as a group, right? Is that, that we, you know, it's it, the timing's right because everyone's going online. What it was online, right? What could have been online pre-COVID, now during COVID, post-COVID, everything that can been online is now going online, yeah. right? education everything else but in this particular case a lot of people coming online you train online people speak online to communicate online and that so what what so that's great because you can see understand more of, of what's going on but also what comes out are things that are not true right like some truths that are they're not they're not true and there's been a couple of things that times where uh, people have said things that are not true about about uh, Guru Roland, even sometimes Guru, uh, Guru, Guru Master Tuper, and um, and 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 that's that's. I hope that that's one thing that we're going to be standing for is we're going to be defending the truths um, of, of, of 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 our masters and also of our masters' friends. If there's anything that's that's mentioned that's that's false, we will call it out. We'll call it out nicely. Um, we won't we won't you know embarrass it, but we, we'll just have to in our way. Through our movements and through our conversations, the truth comes out, right? Mm. You know, but that, that's just part of what we what we want to do. And if there's, you know, if obviously we'll back. We we'll only do it when we can back it up. Yeah, right. With facts and yeah, control. yeah. If we can back, I mean, that's why I hope I, I speak for my 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 brothers here. But we won't we won't say something and not have not have the substance to back it up. Yeah. And one of the things that 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 master, that the guru Brandon has is he's got the movement. You know, if there's one thing that you can archive, right? You can archive a lot of things that are written. That's great, okay? Mm -hmm. Martial arts archive is martial arts is movement, and where that archive lasts is is in movement. Where that archives are, it's a guru, Brandon, because it's the yeah. movement. Yeah, it's martial arts, right? Dean? It's martial art. It's movement, and that's with with, with guru, Brandon. Yeah, so, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think for yeah anything. That involves integrity, honesty, and all that. You obviously want to represent and protect that. You know what I mean? Otherwise, those walls can come tumbling down fast, you know? <laughs> so, um, yep. Demos. All right. So, oh, I'm sorry. Did anybody else want to any say anything else in regards to maybe something we didn't cover? No? Okay. Yeah. Are you sure? Good. I'm the only one to put my neck out. All right, so demos with some tell. So we got some show with a, with some tell. So who um, who wants to show and tell first? Or you want me to? Uh, uh, so save Siguro Brandon last. That's my vote. Say, I'm sorry, save uh, Guru Brandon for last? That's for last. Okay. <laughs> All right, so. Either one. So, Guru, okay, all right, so Guru Jeff, yeah, you were doing the thing, Guru Jeff, yeah. you were going to do the piece, yeah. you were going to do the piece on, like, taller people, what have you? Is that, am I correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I think it's yeah, excellent. That, that is <laughs> okay, uh, can you guys hear me? I, I have to wear the mask because uh, I have to do this with my no. student. No, we can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, I can't hear them, but come on in. He didn't go back out again, right. did he? Uh, oh, Got something going on. Okay. okay, so this is my student, uh, Abe. Abe is a uh, how tall are you? Six one. He's six foot one. Okay, as you yeah. can see, there's a uh, 
size discrepancy between us, right? Yes. You can see that. So uh, basically, what we're going to do right now is demonstrate how a shorter guy can come in with a taller dude. Okay. So all right, I got to my eyes. Oh my gosh. Hopefully, you guys can see me. Uh, see me wow and stuff. So, while I'm dealing with a guy that's at least a foot taller than me, okay? So let's move over here so you can, we can actually see you. Look. There you go. You can see right here. He's going to feed me one through five. And basically what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to move around uh, with this uh, particular uh problem if you will okay back up a little bit more so you can see no nope, it's this way okay hopefully you guys can see this so give me number one notice that i can touch him try to touch me he cannot touch you because of the suckling bottle angle okay number two Once again, I can touch him. Let's go move over here a little bit more. I can touch him, but he cannot touch me. Number three. Same thing. He has to turn. He has to turn to me. Okay, number four. So the Tumbao keeps me safe from his length. And the last one is number five, fucked up. Can I reach me? He cannot. Okay? So I just wanted to share that with you guys that through the use of the Tumbao, you are compensated for the height and reach. I think it was excellent. Thank you. Uh, that was excellent. I Absolutely. have to dial back in. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, he's got something okay. going on. Dial okay. back in. He's moving so fast. Did you do the demo? I did the demo. Really good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear him. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> we'll give him. Um, All right. The Guru Vico's. That's hilarious. Now we got some comedy going on. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, uh, video goes up for the audio. Mm -hmm. All right, well, yeah, he's coming back in, but so Guru Vico is going to be next. So I'll minimize. Uh, I'll minimize us. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Right, my turn. Oh God, it's my turn. Okay. Okay. It is it is your uh, turn. <laughs> that's what I was gonna all right. Uh okay, so I think one of the uh sometimes we would like to have students express themselves. I think uh I think I got this from uh I think it's Prof Ocanio, right? Where you start to first learn the words, then the sentences, then the paragraph, then you have your your essay. So your essay is your amara, right? You express. <clears throat> so, uh, so I'll just do a one quick uh, um, single stick amara, all right? And so we have the this is the basics here, basic <clears throat> the basic uh, fighting form, open position, okay? And so I'll just do a quick. Sometimes you first start off with your wide strikes, right? Your your X strikes. See the real coming very narrow. Just narrow fighting. And then later on, as you progress, right, you start, you can, um, once your core is in there, um, you got your power, you're loose, you can start focusing in parts of the body, in your amana, like, so you can work on the face just really fast. Boom, and then you can go face, and then large, so small, 
tight, big. And go big. The king is to bring up your adrenaline so that you're almost like you're really fighting. And then having precision, form, right? And be in control because what normally happens, and I'm panicking now, is that if you get into a fight, you're from zero to 100 right away. And so can you maintain the techniques, maintain the, the basics, the footwork, um, while you're going 100%, adrenaline's pumping, keeping your elbows in, not going wide all of a sudden, but really tight, and then also short and long. <laughs> coming in. So that's what you want to kind of see later on. But in the, first, the beginning, the student starts the amino with the basics. One, two, three, four. See? And later on, you let it go. That's all I got. That was excellent. Thank you. That was really good. Really, really good. So we got I'm breathing heavy. I'm gonna mute myself. That's all right. <laughs> and we saw and certainly uh so for <laughs> last and certainly not least, Google Brandon. So I'm gonna minimize um okay. So for I think it's just minimizing the art. But for mine, it's mainly just more of Abecedario. Abecedario has always been understood as more like the numbering strikes. So back in Bay, it was always just been from one to six, and then seven to eleven was lost in terms of the files, and the number twelve came in. But then after like, through like research and everything, a lot of the videos, I was able to bring it back. But for now, I'm gonna focus more on just showing you guys more of like one through six. So meaning, so the numbering strikes is what we normally use in sparring. The reason why we say numbering strikes is because with every number consists of how many strikes. So for example, so you see you go right here, so you have the number one, the bug side, right? Simple. There's one. Number two, the X. With the movement. So not just the hitting, but actually with the movement. Number three, it's what we call like V to get that a V, but some people say it's um, like an angulo, an arco, and an angulo. But for me, like how it was grow growing up, it was always V to get that a V, the number three. So the chop. Ikedena and the chop. But on the last chop, meaning as I chop here, it's just the arms. Boom. Ikedena. This is the windup that you have. So the moment you come in for that last chop right here with the hips. So you can interpret the first one as let's say you fake this, you go low, and then you finish. Or let's say he's coming in, he uses as a block, he comes down, he uses it as a block as well, or deflection, and then you finish with the chop. But the main thing is the movement. So you have number three, boom, hips. Number four. Number four, there's two ways to do it, because of course there's stick and blade. Number four, you have one, two, is what we call pipic, or some people say whipping. Two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. Now the difference between the two is that on the on the pipic or the whipping, if it's stick, of course, it's, you're just flicking with the wrist, but now, if it's blade, it doesn't really make sense. So that's why if you're using blade for it, it goes one, and then it's more of a stabbing motion as opposed to a hitting with a flat. And then boom, boom. So notice how I changed it up, meaning because my hand was down here, because there's two different kinds, I came out more with an alchemist to a nicodena, as opposed to doing this one here, here. Because it depends on where my hand is finishing up, whether if my hand is up here, I need to go into it. If my hand was pointed down here, then I come up. There's no need to force a technique because you're already in that position. You go right into it. Number five. Number five, our number five is more of Lameco number five, meaning since my dad and Kunu Guru Egger Suita have always been you know, really good friends, so this has always been dedicated to him. So number five, one, Abanico. So one, two, boom, boom, boom. So that's more of a dedication to him. But illustration of abanico, 
since this is more stick based of a Nico for is this one. So the focus is on the blade. So meaning, instead of doing this, as you can see, flat. I mean, it will hurt, but it's not exactly deadly or anything. So with the Abanico for the Illustrisimo system, it goes here. See what I mean? And then number six is just a combination of the X, Planchata, Alubus. So whenever you're going through the motion, you have, let's say, sparring, trying it one, boom, move around, two, move, three, four. So with the four, I broke it down, meaning the rhythm is different. Because if someone's just standing in there and sparring, no one's going to take all this. They're going to move with it. So I broke it down. One, two, move. Then three, four. So it's more of being able to, uh, to break down the two. Because anything you're doing more of, let's say more than three strikes, from what, from what I've experienced, you know, no one's just going to stand there and take all the hits. Number five, if I'm trying to do this motion, I do it more of once I'm actually inside. Once I actually get in the range, I go boom, boom. But now, depending on how my opponent's coming in, if he moves out, then I slide in. If he comes in at me, I'm already on the side. If he tries to face at me, he tries to hit me, then I use this to move out. So depending on how you want to use it, there's always that breakdown. Boom, boom. I'm not saying you stay here. It's more of once you're here, you wait. And then, you wait for his reaction, whether you're moving out or chasing after him. It's really up to you. So just something to kind of keep in mind as you're going through the techniques, which is what Guru Vika said, uh, what he was doing a while ago, is that in Amara, you start practicing all these. Boom, boom, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. So that's more of just a, a series for Abyssadar, so you can see it, at least from application from the 1 through 5 at least, and then showing more of like from 1 through 12. Right? Oh, <laughs> excellent. Thank you. All were excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Audience, uh, I don't know who's not going to enjoy all that. Uh, that. Those were incredible. Thank you. you know, thank you for doing those. Um, wow. So this has been nothing uh, but wonderful. Um, just to close out, uh, again, I, I think this has been fantastic. Uh, just for folks who um, were of interest in following up with any of you guys, uh, Guru Vico is in Dallas. Google Jeff is in San Diego, runs the San Diego branch of KI, actually heads KI USA from there. And then, of course, uh, Guru Brandon is, is in Manila, but he's offering, um, and I take him as well, and I find him very helpful and, and enjoy them, um, online classes. So actually, with each of these gentlemen, you can do that. Um, so I highly recommend that if you guys – to uh, get in touch with these guys, those who would like to pursue this, like what you saw and heard tonight, you can you know get a hold of them. They're all on Messenger and uh, Facebook here, of course. And if you want to, uh, there's a, a group page, and correct me if I'm wrong, Guru Jeff, uh, K, uh, Kalia is from San Diego? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, if you want to get more yes. information there, and uh, again, all of them are available via Messenger. And I'm trying to think as uh, far as any other availability, as far as contact. For um, um, okay, website? Oh, so, um, so normally um, for Instagram, yeah. So oh, you Instagram. Can also Instagram, okay. Uh, the pages, there's the um, Cali Lustrismo USA, like for the San Diego one. Okay. And then there's uh, Cali Lustrismo Dallas. And then also there's one also with, with me as well, which is a uh, Ricketts FMA. So feel free to just follow us so you can always get content in terms of let's say me like posting like some archives or let's say with Guru Vico or Guru Jeff, like like showing more of like techniques and then training or like what goes on within the day. Just so if, if they want to keep themselves like interested and always wanting to see okay. more. Mm -hmm. No, perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, again, this has been absolutely wonderful. Any closing statements from any of you guys? No, I just wanted uh, to thank uh, want like everyone. Well, go ahead. I'll let you finish first. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, no, no, I just want to thank 
Thank you, Dean, for uh, hosting us, and uh, always a pleasure to talk about uh, KI and uh, other stuff. And I just want to give a shout out to my uh, students who have uh, been supportive throughout uh, this pandemic. I mean, you know, mm. I have the best students, I must say. You know what I'm saying? They, they've always been there. Uh, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be a teacher to them. And that's uh, uh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, uh, you're welcome. I, I'm happy to do this. So I, I was looking forward to this. So, you know, I mean, so this is nothing but enjoyment. So, yeah. Um, how about uh, Guru Vico, any uh, closing statements? Really just thank you, Dean, for, you know, this platform. Um, you know, I, 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 yeah, thank you for, for again, helping us, uh, you know, reach the goals, right, that we oh want. Gosh. Happy to do. Happy to uh, do. Shout out to Master Arnold, uh, Coach, um, you know, in the Kiro group. Shout out to everyone from, from Canada group. Um, shout out to the West Coast, Lameco guys, you know, brothers, um, East Coast. Um, shout out to uh, the guys in Australia, right? Um, you know, you are you guys, too many, too many. Um, I miss my students in Tennessee. Craig, I see you on here, mate. Go hope to oh, see you see soon. You. With everyone else um but yeah again i just want to uh, thank everybody uh and also you know thank the lord for for for, for taking this as far as he can he's been it's all his grace that's gotten us here and it's going to be amazing sure no oh, great thank you guru brandon any closing hey. statements no, it's more of a like i really appreciate like you like really helping us out again like with what uh guru vika said about this platform and everything like really oh, giving it really like 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 speaking it you know, and also to reach out to people. And then also thank you to the audience. It was really, um, mm -hmm. it takes the time to really like check, check us out and everything. Really questions. Have to say, and also with the yeah. questions, you know, I really appreciate it. And I just, uh, you know, shout out to the Kiro group with, uh, headed by Master Arnold and also with um, uh, Guru Duran Sordo. He's also the one who's also handling also the Bakbaka in Makati as well. Okay. And also with the old students right there, like Vaughn Suriga and Mark Forrest. Like we've been there with them like for for so long, like really, like OGs, you could say. And like when oh, we went to the states, yeah. <laughs> like really been with them for a while as well. Wow. Yeah. Um, no, you guys are most welcome. Um, you know, no, this. I mean, this is just enjoyable to get you guys on here and um, and all that. So and uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys uh, get momentum from this and momentum from you know whatever you guys keep doing i mean if i'm i'm sticking guru jeff it looks like you might be moving to a bigger place right so hopefully that happens yeah that that's a big possibility for us um you know we're, we're looking at a place right now that would facilitate not only ki usa but also uh my nonprofit, um uh, martial arts for life mm. so basically it's going to be a major hub for uh, as, a, as you know, I'm a pastor also, and, um, so my church is going to be uh, the, the main uh, hub as well. So mm -hmm. we're, we're planning to be this next year. So, oh, you know, Lord willing, we'll yeah, we, we want to we wanna reach out to the community as well and, uh, and let them know that we're uh, available to, uh, to serve them, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, best of luck to you. I, I hope it all works out for you over there. Yeah. And, uh, well, you guys will knock on wood, and I, I, I don't want to jinx myself, but hopefully in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, December, in like 11 days, you guys, I'll be in Dallas, and, uh, well, and you guys will oh. see, you guys will see pics, I'm sure, and uh, and all that. I'm gonna send video to these guys here. Say, what do you think, guys? What do you think? Oh my God, I know. She said, can't wait. <laughs> well, Yo, so it's high knees. High yeah. knees. <laughs> A lot of high knees going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, all right, guys. I, I thank you so much. And uh, anyway, I'm just going to drop you guys at the bottom. I'll just, I'll close out, okay? All right, for sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you, right. Yeah, just uh, don't leave. I'm just going to drop you on the bottom.
All right, that wraps up uh, episode 81. Uh, for those I'm going to download that, that will be on the YouTube channel. Next Tuesday, for those of you who are still watching, uh, David Hines, uh, somebody I really recommend watching. Uh, that's coming this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Somebody who is under Bill Brill and a system that I have nobody yet to cover, Tobosa system, which was in Hawaii. Um, that's going to be really interesting. Um, so, again, I have had nobody on regarding that system. So I think that's going to be really unique to hear about. So, again, that's going to be this Tuesday, David Hines, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And also I'll be reeling uh, December's list uh, in a day or so who's going to be on. So some great names coming up. I want to thank you all who are watching and commented. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe to FMA Discussion on YouTube. Thank you to those who submitted questions. And we'll see you next Tuesday.